today. I'm really excited to learn more about this project, and I know you're excited to talk about it. Um, so let's get started. Um, I'm going to start with you, Johannes, and I would like you to tell us about spot farming um, and considering all the other neobank offerings, um, what makes Spot9 special? What's your mission and vision for the bank? First of all, I would thank you to be here to motivate us. So thank you, Tiana, for being here with us. Um, I think what is what is spot nine? So your your one and only bank means that we have the vision to free people from their current banking limitations, to give them the chance to build their own application, to customize, to integrate all their bank accounts. That we have just one application for all their financial needs, includes insurance, includes your loyalty, wallet application, whatever. Um, and uh, tell us why you partnered with Suture Bank specifically. So I'm going to ask you a part of the same question in a second. But you've got you know a, a partnership relationship here. What brings, what does that bring to the market that's different? Okay, I just want to give it up first of all to you, Martin. Um, but what I can say, okay, I, what I can say in the beginning is that I'm very proud and um, I appreciate that the Suture Bank has been after long negotiations with other banks in Germany that we find the super banks are helping us to bring the to bring the crypto paralyzed the crypto ADMs in the German street and also to see the lot of work that we are doing without a lot of experience in the market and they're helping us to grind and they help us now and that is, that is also one apart from the from that you stay that we announced that we will bring the first uh, real deal compliant crypto ADM in the German market. So I think that's really interesting, and, and let's pause for a second there. Um, a lot of projects, um, you know, have this young, fresh, cool idea, and they just start running. And I think what's really poignant is you had a great idea, and the first thing you did was you went and found an advisor that actually knows what they're doing and has done this before. So is, is, is that what you're saying? That's one of the reasons that you decided to seek a partnership early on? Um, well, Yes, uh, we looked at how we can create the right strategic partnerships uh, to build a best of breed holistic solution. A lot of uh, startups have great innovative ideas, but they can't execute. And first, you need to have uh, you know, the right idea, you need to have the right partnerships, but you also need to have the regulatory legal framework to support you for a real business. Yeah. And if you're talking about a financial services uh, company, ultimately, hopefully, a, a real bank. Um, you know, you need to partner with the right people, and you know, we, we saw Sutra Bank as uh, a great partner to help us with the crypto ATM business to bring cryptocurrency to digital assets to the German public. Okay. Okay. And how about why? Why is Spotline? What's attractive about them? Um, 
And so I think we develop, we look together this, this case here. And um, also we think that it was the right decision uh, to, to go with this spot now. Great. Thank you for that. Yeah. <laughs> I, I think that um, you know when you talk to VCs as well, that you know it's something that you hear. There's something about the founder. There's something about the project. That having an idea, being able to execute it, um, is we all know very challenging. And finding the right partners, not just because you believe in each other, but you think the same way when each other talks to each other, when you talk to each other. Um, there's an understanding there, I mean, or a synergy. I think that's really important in a, in a partnership. That sounds like you guys have that. Um, so, Alex, um, what does the current market look like today? And why is it important to launch a proposition like Spotline now? Um, and so, you know, there are other neobank challengers, but there's a number of things about Spotline that are really quite different. So, can you tell us about those? Sure. I mean, uh, a lot of people are in Europe are starting to get to know other uh, challenger banks, um, even one in, uh, in Germany. But I would say uh, the market is still uh, got a lot of space for innovation, and um, we're not just a digital bank. We want to be much more than that. So tell me about that specifically. What's specifically different? Well, we want to we want to bring traditional finance together with digital finance. So we want to bring more traditional public market products like you know, bank accounts. Uh, assets um, like, uh, say, equity, commodity, <coughs> we want to be able to bring what we tra traditionally have a hard time having access to. Um, and we want to see how we can bring all those digital um, products that are being built out there, whether it's a Bitcoin in terms of currency, or let's say asset backed uh, currency or, or security, mm -hmm. um, and uh, see how we can bring them together into one solution. So our uh, vision is you know, for a customer to have one app, one card for all the financial needs. So that in one app, you can do what you traditionally need, maybe several apps or companies or things you can't even do on an app, maybe by going to a regional branch or a brokerage firm. Uh, and we want to be able to provide all these products that you quickly can choose and customize and also be able to have full control and transparency over it. Because today, uh, there's a lack of transparency, there's a lack of control. Consumers are pretty much forced to use apps the way they're built from um, various service providers. And we want to change that. We think there's room for real innovation. Uh, and we also think um, you know, we need to do that with our partners. Okay. So, Hans, this sounds like a pretty big undertaking. Um, you're going to need a big team of people to do this, dedicated people. Um, tell us a little bit about your team today and the culture that you're trying to build. Yes, um, actually we are study people. So the people in our team are very proud if you start, I think, alone, just in a small group of two or three people, just you what you're telling, and afterwards you started to raise the, the, the first money, then you started to grow up with your team, and I think it's very great, and also um, that I met, uh, that I met Adam, Alex, um, also as a real partner, and uh, also as a co-founder. Um, I think, the small steps and also milestones um, build an environment uh, that I think is a small, we have a really good spirit and we created, uh, we created this moment and we hold this moment very long and we give us a very comfortable feeling in our office. So now we are 30 people, uh, 50 people full time, I think over 50 people part time. A lot of partners like Stroids, KPMG, like Isana, also work are helping us to build. Um, um, helping us to build and to grow with the company, which is really great. I was glad that we had You know, we've got a, a great uh, CMO, uh, Tim, and a uh, COO and CFO that are part time, but hoping to bring on full time uh, with their own uh, experience in the banking industry, with over you know, 25 years each, and uh, their own banking license. So I, I think, you know, bringing on the right professionals at the executive level to kind of really build out a uh, real business. So uh, we're very excited to work with the team that we have here. It's also funny if you're talking about uh, the team and see that it's correct that you mentioned it. Yeah? So if you're talking about our COO or CFO, for example, that we started hiring people, they are such better than we are, and they are helping us also. And they have also the experience in making us using COO, uh, Christian. 
that's 25 years experience in banking, um, CFO also, and um, I think this is really great, this really helps us uh, to grow faster and to build the structure we really need. I think it's one of the problems that I've said, to build a really structure for, for growing. Yeah, I think it's not just money, we are, I'm sitting with a lot of companies, um, a lot of startups together, um, they show me say, hey, we have, uh, now we find a 25 million, 50 million, or 75 million, 100 million. Uh, but we don't have the structure to take more people in, or we don't find the people because the people don't want to work for us. Right. And um, I think this is, this is also one point, also one point from us as a leader uh, to build this structure and um, also to help people, also to teach people, and to educate people. And that's what we are doing to build a comfortable environment. Well, and from a partner perspective, Carla, how important is it when you are looking to partner with somebody and you look at their leadership team and the, and the, the roadmap, not just of the product that they're trying to build, with the company and the governance and the, the culture. I thought I was to be in the side of the company. I was going to be in the side of the company. I was going and therefore, we build a little bit like a easy time. Mm -hmm. We have to do it. And if we are small, then we cannot run thousands of projects. So we have to, to decide very carefully uh, with which parties um, we want to cooperate. And uh, therefore, the, um, the, 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 the management team, and this was, I, I, I mentioned before, why we decided for um, for Spokane and for, for, for other companies because we was um, we were convinced from the company team and also from, from the ecosystems around Spotlight. And uh, so we can back to the question um, the knowledge management team is not more important than the product. Because the product can be good, but the team is it's, uh, it's not good wouldn't decide for a corporation. Um, this, product could be so or only two product, but we can see that there's a very strong match um, and team behind this product. Perhaps we can decide also for this corporation mm -hmm. because the team is great. Yeah. And, and, and perhaps the team is great, uh, perhaps there's already we see uh, venture capital behind the, the startup. These are also very important factors. Okay, so uh, how are we doing on time? 15 minutes. Let's, let's get into the crypto bit, shall we? Um, so Spot9 plans to offer crypto ATMs in Germany. Uh, many other jurisdictions have expressed some concerns around crypto ATMs and potentially providing access to um, prominently laundering um, and other forms of nefarious activity. So um, I'm going to come back to you, Mark. What brings crypto? Why bring crypto ATMs to the German market? And understanding that you're kind of the guy around uh, the regulation and that understands the complexities of what that's going to entail, um, how, how do the regulations around this impact potentially taking something like this to market? The problem is that the regulation is very far on this point. We only know that for running an ATM, you need a bank license. That is the only regulation we have. This means there are no regulation about ALR, there are no um, regulation about um, uh, other stuff. There is also, for example, there is no um, regulation for how to account Bitcoin in your balance sheet. So meaning this is a whole field, not only of agents, especially of agents, but there is a whole um, field of trading Bitcoin as a regulation related entity. Um, and to give uh, private customers access to this, um, uh, to cryptocurrencies. There's no regulation, it's, 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 it's a lot of guesswork. And then, you know, guesswork, it, it was perhaps one of the adventures of Sutra Bank. Can yeah. take some yes. um, yes. in, uh, in the regulation. <lacht> Der Gedanke ist richtig, was? Ja? 
1845 kannst du dann die Kamera drüben abbauen. Und ja, wenn ich helfe, dann hier noch den Scheiß zu raussuchen. Den müssen wir dann irgendwie, ich weiß noch nicht, wie wir den Rohr abkriegen. Transactions 
um, to mitigate that exposure. But also, you know, we have technology solutions to make sure that the wallet is not dirty. It doesn't come from the dark web or a terrorist, right? Or gambling, in, you know, which is illegal in Germany. Um, but also the transaction history of that coin, so that we know that we're not buying a coin or selling a coin that's dirty, so we, we can help assure our customers that they're buying something that's clean. They're not participating in a criminal activity yeah. or a uh, risk is reduced. Yeah, exactly. But you know, to your point, um, yeah, the Sutra Bank has their own risk management system and we're fully integrated with them. Great. Okay. Um, so let's move on to your future roadmap. Uh, we were talking earlier about a security token. Do you want to tell me a little bit about that? So, you know, we've got cryptocurrency on one side and then looking to issue a security token on another. You can also do this. Right. You can also It's not so firm. But I can, but I can, I can introduce the roadmap, and then you can go with yourself. <laughs> no, okay. Um, but actually, first of all, we go with our crypto ADMs, crypto ADMs. Then um, I think we just we will go out with our product uh, first with our uh, mobile banking app, and then afterwards we will do directly immediately after the launch our STO. So I mean, security perspectives, but I think uh, Alex, I think you can explain it very well. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm very excited. About Germany's had to approve uh, security tokens for fixed income bonds. Um, you know, we've been working very hard uh, with our KPMG <coughs> to really write the security perspectives uh, based on the new EU regulations that came out on July 21st uh, so that we can offer uh, the retail market or our customers or any retail investor the opportunity to invest in spot time and participate in the share of our profits. Right? And so in the traditional sense, it's like uh, a capital market's uh, preferred share equity uh, model or approach. But the difference is that because it's tokenized uh, and because it's through uh, laws and regulations that are EU-wide, the uh, purchaser is protected. Right? And so they have recourse. Right? Now, what we've said in our security perspectives about our company, our financials, the risks, etc., uh, they are fully aware of what they purchase but also that if you have recourse, whereas if you utility put in the tokens, you have no recourse. That's one thing. The second thing is I'm very excited that we can be the primary issuer of these uh, tokens. But we've also partnered with Swarm. Uh, you know, we're very proud uh, of their um, infrastructure, their solution, and their, uh, I guess, vision with regards to providing a regulatory compliant infrastructure so that you can and not only issue that, and, but you can also tie it to um, certain protocols. And what we're thinking of doing ours on the Ethereum platform, on the SRC20 protocol that they provide. And, and, and do it in a way that uh, when that security is traded, that we are compliant with the jurisdictional laws for both counterparts. And so if there's a buyer and a seller, we make sure that we adhere to compliance of the regulations for that country. And we can do that with their infrastructure, which allows us to uh, open up the security token to secondary markets on regulated and unregulated exchanges, which is a big problem for security tokens today that a lot of people don't talk about. There's a lot of projects out there that issue the tokens. I talk about it. Yeah. <laughs> there's no secondary trading market. That's so, right. So raise liquidity. There's no, yeah. there's no liquidity, and then you have the value uh, you know, drops. And so uh, for us, part of our solution is not only issue it, but also make sure that there's uh, liquidity through secondary markets. And uh, you know, Swarm hopefully will provide that clients. They've got a, a great market access protocol. Um, they're also very much of a decentralized uh, foundation, a not-for-profit institution which we're proud to partner with. And uh, we think that, um, that once we have a great product like the crypto ATMs, our mobile banking app, that it'll be a great value proposition for our customers to say, why don't you participate you just in our success? You the next question. Why would people buy your token? <laughs> <laughs> I think it's a, it's a nice question. So why do I buy the SPI? I think, first of all, we start this, what I would say, or what I add, we start to build, we go into the crypto ADMs, we build a black hole, I would say, in Germany and also in French. So I think this was one of my goals, to go out to the crypto ADMs in Germany, and I think now we can, we can get this done with Sudoku. 
the thicker part is to say, did us build an STO or not an STO because now it's necessary in the market to do an STO. I think before it was also that we, if you take a look back two, three years in the ICO market for sure, yeah, 99% of all the companies that do an STO, they don't have a product, it was just fundraising. fundraising. And then there were, were not securities. And for me, it was really great to go out with an STO, with an STO now to build securities and also led to. Um, let the people participate in the long-term success of NetBest for time. And this was one more why, why we want to go out with our SEO after we launch the product that we show, okay, we are on the market with the crypto ATMs, we are on the market with our, with our banking product, and now you can buy and now you can be a part of Spot9 with the SP9. And this is um, why we do this later. Great. Okay, so trailblazing, innovating, um, what, what's the future of retail banking look like? So you guys are approaching the, the crypto element, the, the digital first, um, trying to simplify the experience, uh, tailor the experience. Is, is that what we should be expecting from our retail banking experience? And what's going to happen in the next five years that might surprise us? I think um, one more thing is, uh, you know, I would ask that is, how can we simplify and enhance the user experience and give people more options and more control and transparency? So, you know, we believe in, uh, you know, an app that somebody can easily control all of their finances, whether it's um, transactions, payments, but also um, their investments, their savings, um, you know, whether it's uh, buying uh, or selling investment assets, um, or even using products like insurance uh, and others. Uh, so I think what we're going to see a lot of in Germany, for example, is consolidation of the market. You know, there's, uh, I read a, a study recently that there's 1,600 banks in Germany, you can be honest argument, but there is uh, a lot of debate about how much it's going to consolidate, potentially up down to 200 in the next 10 years.
for people to really learn about persuading scams around the world and how Spotlight is involved in that um, in our partnership around uh, Bank and others. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you.